all right so i'm doing another computer case video not another design but refinements to the previous design and i thought it may be a good idea to make several shorter videos each covering a specific thing which i can later combine into a full update video but first check out what jlc sent me you must have heard of this company before they sponsor a lot of videos like this they invited me to try their prototyping service for my project so I asked for my case to be printed in their 8001 transparent resin and look how nice this is you can see right through it just like acrylic let me just transfer a PC over to it and check it out it looks better than I expected it did come out about 5% bigger than the FDM version which leaves a gap but it's not a problem, I can just print another front panel. Better that it's a bit too big than a bit too small. At least that's what she says. Anyway, a print this size costs about $100, though you can get up to $70 off with coupons at the moment. I've put a link in the description if you're interested. They will let you know if your model is difficult to print and suggest modifications. Speaking of difficult to print, let's get back to FDM and talk about some filament. The previous filament I was using was J.O. Brand PLA Matte, which had a nice surface finish, and I thought it would be alright for this, as I was only using it for the outer sleeve, with the more critical components being PETG. But I was wrong about this, which I found out when one of my cases melted, and I'm sharing this mistake to provide the best information. I had my two PCs next to each other, with only a small gap between them, like this, so there was restricted airflow. And the part that melted, or maybe I should say softened, was this area here, above the CPU cooler, which I only noticed because it sagged inwards, hitting the fan and making a noise. I was able to stop it by pulling the soft plastic away. And this is the result of that. Obviously it's pretty bad. The GPU side was fine. I'm using a graphics card with horizontal cooling fins, which directs the exhaust sideways and out, which works well with this design, but the CPU side is more restricted. I'm experimenting with hiding the power button to create more exhaust area here, but regardless of any airflow optimizations, it is clear that PLA isn't good enough. There was a comment on the last video saying this, but then the next comment correctly states that other YouTubers doing this are using PLA. And then there's a whole debate over whether it's good or not. Anyway, the obvious solution is to switch to a more heat resistant plastic. I've been looking at the latest PETG variations from Sunlu and Bamboo Lab. And I tried the Sunlu one first, called High Speed Matte PETG. But it printed terribly, with loads of problems. So I complained to the seller and got a refund. But rather than buying some more of it, I decided to try the bamboo version called PETG HF. It sounds perfect from the website's description, though it does warn you need to dry it out before printing. So I did this and it printed terribly. I thought the temperature might be a bit too high, so I dropped it down close to its melting point. And all this resulted in was a very warpy print. Check this out. So I went back to the sun though, to see if I could get it to work, and over the course of one test print, it got better, as if the roll was bad on the outside, and good on the inside. So I stopped that print, and started a fresh one, and it turned out mostly alright, with only a few problems. It did have a slight warp, but this could be solved with thicker walls, which is a change that I've been thinking about making for a while now. In this design that means switching to a larger nozzle size, due to the double wall vase mode style printing I'm using. So I brought some more of the Sunlu filament, as I was out of the grey, and I resized the model for a 0.8mm nozzle. I also took the time to add improved dust filter rails to the small version of the case, as these have been working pretty well. And this time round, it turned out great. I got these two near perfect cases out of it. Something interesting to note is that going from a 0.6 to a 0.8mm nozzle makes the walls a third thicker, not a quarter like you'd expect, and this is reflected in the weight. So it's been a bit hit and miss with this filament, 
Both brands seemed to have sent me bad rolls. I gave the bamboo another chance, ensuring it was bone dry before printing, but it was still the same. I just dry my filament using a warm print bed and a bunch of desiccant, and a bag, which has been effective with the sundew filament. I did notice it start to bubble after just a day in the air, so both these filaments are very hygroscopic, though they shouldn't be wet from the factory. I did consult some filament review videos before buying these, but none of these videos show any of the problems that I had. Now I'm pretty sure this sundew filament is going to handle the heat better than the PLA, but I don't just care about thermal resistance, I also care about the surface finish, which isn't really matte, I'd call it semi-gloss, but it's still good, a lot better than the full gloss you get with most PETG. Also it's cheaper, so it wins, just barely. Anyway, I hope this has been informative. I can try some other filaments for the main update video, so if you have any suggestions, let me know. You can download the files from printables. I updated them as much as I could just before posting this video, with the changes for the next videos, so you don't waste your filament on parts that are going to change. Here's a little preview of what I've got planned. You can probably figure out what I'm doing here, but we'll have to wait for the full explanation. If you find this stuff interesting, like and subscribe or even donate. Links are in the description. Thank you for watching.